Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to do another collection video. We are going to be working on highlighters. So I've done all of my eyeshadow palettes, all of my face palettes, all of my bronzers, all of my blushes. Now it's time to get into some really nice stuff. You guys have been waiting for my highlighter collection. So I keep them in this acrylic drawer and then... <laughs> also this acrylic drawer. The ones in the drawer we're going to start off with first are mostly my most affordable highlighters and then we'll get into higher end. So if you want to see all of these highlighters individually, let's just get going. <laughs> So like I said, this first drawer that we're starting off here with is mostly my drugstore and more affordable highlighters. We had some things that just didn't fit in the other drawer. Now all of the highlighters in this video that I'm showing you are not in face palettes. So I do have a whole face palette collection. All of those highlighter palettes as well are in that video. But these are just my individual highlighters. So we will start off over here. Now this first one is not a drugstore or more affordable highlighter. This one is, I would say, high end. This is from Persona, and this is a highlighter in the shade Zuma. It is so beautiful, you guys. Just the most perfect champagne, slightly gold highlighter. Highly recommend Persona's highlighters. People don't talk about them a lot. They are incredible. I also have this Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. This one is in the shade Precious Petals. This one is a classic. This is one that I bought years ago, probably when I was first starting getting into highlighters, and this you wouldn't know was like $30. Amazing quality for the price. I think Wet n Wild does some of the best highlighters at the drugstore. Also from Wet n Wild, I have this blush lighter in the shade Highlight Bling. This is semi-new. It's been out for a few months, but this is quite a blingy highlighter. You can use this kind of as a blush topper, or if you have a deeper skin tone, it's a nice highlight. And then you have this really bright white one. It's not quite as good as the Meg Glow one that I just showed you, but this one is still really nice. I like this one a lot too. I have a couple Wet n Wild ones over here as well. So we have the Highlighting Gold Bar. This was so popular back in the day, and then they relaunched it, and again, it's still very popular. People don't talk about this one as much anymore, but it is a very nice golden highlighter. It's just a few bucks. It's definitely worth grabbing if you're looking for a nice, like, gold highlighter. Um, and then this one came out in a collection Wet n Wild had a couple years ago, and this is the Earth Highlighter. It's a really nice one. I bought the whole collection. This is the only one that I still have. It's the only one that I actually wear. Again, it's good quality. It's not as good as some of their other highlighters, but it was definitely worth keeping, and it's quite smoothing on the skin. Down here in this corner, I have this Miss Cop Makeup Blush Highlighter. I bought this when I was in Spain. I don't think it's a Spanish brand, but it just was a brand I never heard of. Honestly, don't love this highlighter. It's a little bit chalky, but I bought it in Spain, so I just kind of want to keep it for the memories, even though it's a super chalky highlighter, but I'll use it every now and then because it does give a glow. It just feels really cheap. As I have Wet n Wild highlighters placed everywhere throughout this drawer, but this is the I'm So Lit highlighting powder, and this is really, really bright. Honestly, I wish I would have gone with a lighter shade in this. It's really nice. It's just kind of white and stark on me, so I don't prefer it, but if I do want something super glowy, this is a nice loose highlighter. I'm not super into loose highlighters, but they really do give a glow that most press powders can't give. So if you're looking for a nice affordable highlighter that's loose, this is a good one to look into. We have this Revlon Skin Lights Prismatic Highlighter. This is so bomb. If you're looking for a highlighter, again, that has high-end quality, this is really great. It's that baked gelée formula, so you don't get a lot of fallout. And this is so smoothing on the skin. It's really one of my favorites from the drugstore. It's very, very nice. It's semi-new. Again, it's one that's been out for a few months, but it is totally worth it. Highly recommend. I have this guy from Flower Beauty. This is the Pyramids Cheek Color in the shade Rose Glow. So this can be used as a blush or a highlighter. I really like the versatility that it has. I decided to keep it in my highlighter drawer because that's typically how I tend to use it. I tend to stick in this range, but this one is nice as well. It's not one of my favorite highlighters in the world, but I do really enjoy it and it's worth keeping. So if you like having different options and a lot of variety in a product, this one is nice if you like that blush lighter look. So I have four of the ColourPop Super 
shock cheeks. So for a while, I didn't know how to use these. I have discovered I like applying these with a sponge. Uh, so I do actually really like these. I feel like they give a very smooth finish on the skin. So this one is Lunch Money. It's pretty bright. It's not the brightest one that I have, but if I want something that gives a nice glow, this is nice. These you have to keep shut tight though so that they don't dry out. And then the other one from the regular line that I have is Flexitarian. Now Flexitarian is very, very white. So this one is super glowy, like back in the day, 2014 kind of glow that was a bit obnoxious. That's what this gives you or super fair skin you would like this color. And then these ones are no longer sold. These two came from a ColourPop collection with Kathleen Light. So this one is I'm on the cusp and I really like this one. This is more of like a wearable super chalk cheek that I go for just for every day. It has a little bit of a golden -y champagne tone to it. And again, I just love the finish that these gives on the cheek. This one's a little bit deeper. This is fire. This one looks really good as a bronzy highlighter. So when I wear a bronzy look, I'll use this. It's a little bit too deep on my skin tone, but I still really like it. And again, that finish. If these didn't dry out, I would own more of these for sure because I think that they are a beautiful formula and actually filming this right now makes me want to buy more because they're so good. All right, so you can see I have a few Kaleidos in here. I have more in the other drawer. These just kind of swam over here because I ran out of room, but I'll show you the ones that I have. The Kaleidos highlighters, beautiful. As you can see, really amazing packaging. So this one is... I forgot that this one was broken. <laughs> Why did I do that? Okay. Uh, we have Mars Melter. So a lot of theirs have really neat duochromes. This one has a more pinky duochrome. Kind of hard to see unless you swatch it. But these give a very nice smooth finish on the cheek. We have Space Age. I get, as you can see, this one's going to give you a bit more of a blue shift. These are really beautiful. I highly recommend them if you're into individual highlighters and you want to support an indie brand. Ray Rider is going to give you a little bit more of an orangey kind of shift. This one is one of the few more wearable ones of these. And then we also have Skywalker right here. And this one is a very glittery blue duochrome to it. Very, very beautiful. Um, I have a few of these Milani Ludicrous Lights highlights. These came out for what was supposed to be their Coachella collection, which obviously didn't end up happening. This first one is Pinkaboo, and I don't really like these so much as highlighters. I feel like they don't give off enough payoff, and they're a little bit chunky, but on the eyes, they're very pretty, so that's where I would use these. But this one's cute. And if you do really want like a duochrome different kind of highlighter, you can make these work. I would say set your face, have it be a little bit damp and put these on top. And this would be perfect for a duochrome highlighter from the drugstore. This one's Peachella. And let me show you kind of what you're getting yourself into. So it has a bit glitteriness to it. As you can see on my finger, it is just a little bit too chunky but again if you want to make it work you can and then here is definitely the more unique one Lala Pablooza and this one specifically I prefer on the eyes because this one looks a little bit chunky on the face we have a classic this is the essence pure nude highlighter if you like an everyday really soft kind of highlighter this is beautiful you actually do get quite a nice amount of glow with this it looks really boring in the pan but it really shows up beautifully on the cheek like a swatch doesn't do this justice but it is so popular and a classic for a reason fabulous for everyday super smoothing on this skin I really do love this one I need to read for this one more. We have another Wet n Wild one here. This is Bougie Brunt. Honestly, I don't know if they even sell this anymore, but this is a beautiful golden highlight. It was a favorite of mine for years. You get so much product and it's so smooth and glowy on the skin. Definitely an underrated product if you ask me. Again, Wet n Wild and the highlighters kill it. I have a few Maybelline Master Chrome highlighters. These are definitely favorites from the drugstore. Most people love these highlighters and they are very good. So I have almost all of the colors. So this is kind of the original gold one and I have to say so many people made this work for them. I feel like it is just a bit too deep on me especially in the winter. They have a beautiful formula though. It's very glowy. It's very soft. It's very creamy. They're very popular for a reason. So this is the original gold. 
this one they like made and said was a collaboration with Nikki Tutorials and then it wasn't so then they just changed the name. This is the lightest one. It's very very stark. I do like to mix it with that golden one but it's really pretty and I do like this one because at least it's not too dark on me. They had a collection with Huma and this was kind of hard to get a hold of. It's almost like a lilac-y color. I love this highlighter because it is such a unique color. I don't have another highlighter that's quite like this gold and lilac shade. It's beautiful. I'm pretty sure they don't sell this anymore, but this one was such a unique highlighter. I'm very happy to have this in my collection. And then we have the pink one. Now, I love the pink one because I love pink blush, and I love using a pink highlighter to bridge from the blush to the highlight. And this is so beautiful. This is probably my most used of these highlighters. Oh, they are so beautiful and creamy. So we have this Milani Cream and Powder Highlight Duo. I have mine in the shade Power Up. And this is another one that I really do love. Honestly, I don't even know which side is supposed to be the cream because they're both really powdery to me. They feel powdery, but these are a beautiful smoothing formula. Again, swatches really don't do highlighters justice, but this is another great quality highlighter from the drugstore. Very smoothing on the skin. Semi-new. Really like this one. I have this sleek makeup highlighter quad, I believe. These were very popular a few years ago. Honestly, I find them to be a bit too stark and I don't like the cream product in here and they're kind of chalky feeling. I don't know. These were so popular because they gave a really blinding highlight that is no longer flattering. Like people realize how bad that looks. So this is an older palette. Probably could declutter this, but this one was very popular back in the day. The Solstice palette. Leave me a comment down below if you remember when this was really popular. The last highlighter that I have in this drawer is from Milani and this is one of my favorite highlighters to bring to travel. This is the Rose Glow Stellar Lights Highlighting Trio, you guys. And it is so so beautiful, so glowy, so smoothing on the skin. The one thing about this I would say is it's not the longest lasting highlighter, but I just love bringing these because I love all three colors. I love the pinky, the gold, and the lighter shade. I mix them, I build on them. Such a beautiful highlighter trio. I like this one a lot. All right, so as you can see here, this is my main drawer. This is my baby. These are all of my deep loves. This is my high-end and luxury highlighter drawers. Let's get um digging. I have a lot to get through. So the first one that we have, this is from an indie brand. This is Touch of Glam Beauty. This is her Pies in the Sky highlighter. This was gifted to me. How cute is this? So these are handmade highlighters. You can find her shop on Etsy. And this actually blends out to be a rose gold highlighter. It's really stunning. You have to use a light hand, but this one is just so cute. It makes me smile. I have three little mini Jouer highlighters. These used to be popping back in the day. I got these from a holiday set on sale at Nordstrom for so cheap. So this one was one of their most popular for a long time, Citrine. It's a very, very glowy highlighter. I remember Nikki Tutorials recommending this. Also in that set, there was Topaz. I really like Topaz. It's just a touch too deep on me, but super glowy and gorgeous and then we have rose quartz here which nowadays that I'm loving pink highlighters I think I need to try this one out and see what I think and remind myself because they have a very glowy soft formula so I think this one will be really nice we have a little mini Becca opal highlighter they were giving these away like candy they still are this is a very popular sample and it's more than enough because you only need a touch of this this is one of my all-time favorite highlighters it's just the perfect everyday highlighter when you want to be really glowy, but it's not an obnoxiously stark color. It's just like the perfect blend into your skin, have glowy skin kind of color. Such an old classic. I still love this one to this day. And then here I have a little mini makeup forever. It's a starlit powder, so it's not necessarily a highlighter, but for a while back in my wanted to be bright light shown in space <laughs> highlight days, I'd put this right at the center of my cheek. It is such a bright color. Honestly, I think I'm going to move this into my eyeshadow drawer since I'm not really that into highlighters like these nowadays because these are super bright. I'm actually going to move this to my eyeshadow drawer because I think this will get more use there. I also have a loose highlighter here from Danessa Myricks. It's an in light powder in the shade Heaven Scent. Now, this one's a bit too deep for me as much as I want it to work for me. I need to order another color, 
but beautiful powder, you guys. It has like a little bit of glowy glitteriness to it. She creates such amazing highlights because her style of makeup, she's a makeup artist, she creates so much dimension on the face. She really focuses on different textures, mixing, layering, and these, I just love her makeup line. And this one is a beautiful one. I just need a new color. Um, I have an Artist Couture. This one I think I got in a boxy charm a while ago, Summer Haze. These are also very nice. This one I don't even think I've used before. How have I not used this before? It's a beautiful color though. <laughs> I swear I've used this one. Oh, you know what I was thinking of? I have another one from Artist Couture. This is one that I've used. This one is the shade Illuminati, very white and bright. He has a very nice loose powder formula, but ugh such a pain to reach in and use but artist couture has a great formula i'd love to see him come out with a press powder if he hasn't before he might have i have this fenty beauty sandcastle highlighter honestly completely forgot that I had this. This was like in a little gift with purchase, sample the brand kind of thing. Super gorgeous. I don't think I've used this maybe more than once. It looks like it could potentially be too deep on me, but I need to put this in the front so I don't forget uh, it. Ooh, this is a big baby for me. I treasure it. It's one of my first Chanel purchases by myself. And this is the illuminating powder that came out in the desert collection. Super luxe. We'll never get rid of this, even though it's not very good brush. It's an interesting highlight formula. I've never had a highlight formula quite like this, but overall it gives a very nice, not super reflective highlight. It just gives a really soft glow. It's really gorgeous. Very, very expensive, but I love it. Next up, I have a Jaclyn Loose Highlighter in the shade Bomb. This is very, very glowy, again, as all loose highlighters are. This one's really, really pretty. She has a very nice formula in these. I haven't used this maybe as much as I should. I should pull this out because I didn't get much use out of this, but she does have a good highlight formula. And then I have a Kylie Cosmetics Santorini Highlighter. Again, a really gorgeous loose highlighter that I swore I had to have and then never used. It's very, very white. I don't- what was I thinking when I bought these colors? I think this will be the only time I'm going to address this on my channel because I don't want to bring attention to this, but since I'm doing a collection video, as far as his products go, I will no longer be reviewing them on my channel, but I have spent my own hard-earned money on his products, so I will not be talking about them on my channel anymore, but they will be in my collection still because there's no point of just throwing it away. Like that's all I'm gonna say on that. So we have the Dior highlighter in the shade Rosy Vibes. One of my favorite all-time highlighters. The best, most prettiest formula. Soft pink highlighter. You really can't get your hands on this anymore. And I've talked about it so much and I feel bad because you can't really buy it anymore, but this is one of the best. Ever. Um, I have a Becca highlighter. This is from the good old Jaclyn Hill days. This is the Champagne Splits. This one had Flower Child and Champagne Pop. And I still grab for this from time to time. As you can see, I even hit pan on Champagne Pop. I really like this. I love the blush color. I love the highlight color. It's still a banging highlight to this day. I have this baby here from Givenchy. And this is the Shimmery Pink Shimmer Powder. The gold one is easier to get a hold of. I bought this at a Neiman Marcus sale recently. First of all, look at this embossing. As you can see, I've started to use it, so it's starting to fade away. And this is a really gorgeous highlighter. It's very smoothing on the skin without being too obnoxious. I've been enjoying this one a lot. I have a Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in the shade Mood Light. I got this at the most recent Sephora VIB sale. I've been enjoying it a lot. I've been enjoying mixing the two colors. I think it's a nice highlighting duo. You get a lot of product. It's not special. It's not one of the most amazing highlighters in my collection, but I am happy to have this. We have this baby from Bobby Brown. This is one of my very first highlighters. It's probably old and gross by now, but I still use it, shamefully admitting it. This is the Pink Glow highlighter. Still beautiful color, you guys. Since I love these pinky highlighters, I'm obsessed with this one. I just remember picking this out and my mom going, this is so expensive. Why are you getting this? There was something about this that spoke to me and I don't know, this one does hold a lot of nostalgia for me. I have 
have this Kylie Cosmetics highlighter in Queen Drip. Not impressed with the quality on her highlighters here. This one I struggle to pick up the pigmentation here. It's a little bit chunky on my cheek. Not a huge fan of this one. I have this Ofra highlighter. This is the Start Inspired, which of course was in collaboration with my girl Samantha March. Such a blinding highlight. I definitely have to use a light hand with it. I'm so proud of her for creating this highlighter though. Everybody loves it. It's a beautiful formula because Ofra just does an amazing job. And I love having the ability to mix the two shades, pick one over the other. It's just a really great overall highlighter. I need to put this towards the front so I grab for it more. Floating around here is from Milk Makeup. This is the Flex Highlighter in the shade Lit. This is one of my favorite highlighting formulas ever. It was in my 2019 favorites, I believe. It's one of the most smoothing highlights ever that are super glowy. I love this one a lot. I have this one from MAC, which is just beautiful to look at more than anything else. And this is the Postmodernist Peach Extra Dimension Skin Finish. Not an amazing formula by any means, but it does give a nice glow to the skin. And like I said, more than anything, I just kind of like to look at it. It's so pretty. I have another good old MAC baby over here. This is a classic and it's very, very nice. This is the Soft and Gentle Mineralized Skin Finish. It just gives an all over glowy, everyday, natural kind of look to the cheek. I love it very much. It's a good one. And then the last one that I have here is a Becca and this is the shade Prosecco Pop. A little bit deeper than Champagne Pop again with that same collection. I actually really like this one because it's a little bit more golden. I went through a golden highlight phase in my life and as you know Becca has a spectacular formula. So I'm going to put these highlighters back on this side and then we'll get to this side. As you can see, very organized. So over here, I have more. Honestly, I didn't put one on any other side for a reason. I just only had one of these organizers. But over here, I do keep these at the front for a reason because these are like my favorite highlighters ever. Both of these are definitely probably my most used highlighters. This is the Dior Backstage Original Glow Face Palette. I just featured this in my, you know, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, this would be the highlighter that I would have. I just love the versatility of the palette. Formula on this is very smoothing, so beautiful. And then a second one came out and this is the Glow Face Palette Volume 2 in the shade Glitz. I don't like this one as much as the first one, but this one is still beautiful. You have a little bit more wearable tones. This one is one of my favorite highlighters ever, as is this peach one. This peach one, literally incredible. We need more peach highlighters out on the market. There's not a lot. Still, I love this one. I prefer the other one, but this one is still amazing. And then right behind that, we had this guy kind of sneaking around. This is from Lara, and this is the illuminating highlight in daylight. Really beautiful formula. I think it was a bit overhyped. I find that it doesn't show up as well as it swatches. I bought this on sale at an Ulta like 21 Days of Beauty or something. It's a nice highlighter but it's not like the best thing I've ever tried. I think this was like sneaking behind here. So we have this one right here from Tom Ford and this is the Sheer Highlighting Duo in Reflex Guilt. These are beautiful. I much prefer this to this one that I showed you over here. I just like these colors more. I think the reflection on the cheek is a little bit more pretty. It's so gorgeous, you guys. I really love this highlight. I have another one from Dior, a favorite of mine. This is the Hollow Pink, and Mel Thompson made me do this because she loved this highlighter, and it's more pinky, which, again, love my pink highlighters. Just a stunning highlight. Nobody does it like Dior, in my opinion. They have kind of looking like, I say a lot of brands have my favorite highlight formula, but just across the board, Dior has the best. I always love every single highlighter they come out with. I have a couple more from Fenty over here. So the first one that we have is Trophy Wife, which does not go on my skin tone at all. I actually use this more so as an eyeshadow. I love this for the holidays. I actually always make an effort to use this on my eyes for the holidays because I love a glittery gold. So this actually, like it doesn't get used a lot, obviously. <laughs> Look at all that I have, but I do make an effort to use this one. And then this is the Kilowatt Duo in Me Money and Hustle Baby. Probably my most used highlighter my senior year of college. I went in on on this highlighter. I loved 
the soft highlighter for my soft highlight days and then I loved building this color on here. They have a good formula. This one I don't use quite as much anymore but it definitely got its money worth from me. And then we also have this diamond bomb. How many carats from the early days of Fenty, one of their first releases. Super glittery. I would put this all over my chest in college and it's like a weird putty formula. Yeah, looking back, I don't think I need this. <laughs> but I mean, it's pretty on the chest if you like some glitter. And then the last few that I have, as you can see, we have some more Kaleido. So I'm thinking about putting these in the other drawer with the other ones. I think I'll do that so that way, you know, we can make some more room in here. Yeah, so much better already. Here are some other shades. Like I said, they have more of that duochrome unique color kind of thing going on. This is Star Surfer, which is pulling a little bit more pink, really stunning. We have Solar Sailor, which is going to give you more of a yellow shift. I know it's hard to see without swatches, but I will have a video with swatches, I promise. We have the first version of Ray Rider, and we have Laser Glazer, which this one's really unique. Definitely prefer this as an eyeshadow, but if you like a really cool, sick green highlight, this is awesome. And then the last one of this entire video, we have Comet Catcher, which is a bit more of a hot, hot pink. I actually kind of like this one on the face. All right, fam and friends, take a look. This is my entire individual highlighter collection. Every single one. Now, I will be doing rankings videos. I will break it up between affordable and then high-end and luxury. Uh, and those videos will have swatches of the highlighters so that you guys can see. It will be a lot of work because I have quite a large <laughs> highlighter collection, but just keep an eye out for those. They are on the way. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would really appreciate it if you would take the time to do so and keep an eye out for the rankings more collection videos i think i'm going to go into foundations next and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one